the man, the myth, the legend, Summoning Salt has done it again. And I don't know the last time he's done a Mario 64 video, but the history of Super Mario 64 16 star world records, it's a perfect timing for this video because I think right now 16 star is at its most interesting point. It's definitely popping off. So we're eating good today. Is this a good spot for my camera? I think it'll be fine. It's not gonna be another React video. Best spot for camera is off. You can fuck off, Stom. You ugly slut. Super Mario 64, 16 star. It's the most popular category in the most popular speed game of all time. Holding a record in it is one of gaming's toughest accomplishments. That's true! Ridiculous glitches and insane movement. Both requirements for a world record. Just a lucky few have been able to call themselves a record holder. Hey, that's me! With an incredible level of competition, it's hard to hold on to it for long. But let's take a look at those gamers and see how they did it. This is the history of the 16 star world record. I, I gotta turn it up a little bit. We need to turn it up just a little bit. That, and the drop needs to hit just a little bit harder. Here we go. All right, is this good? Maybe like there, or is it too loud? Fuck the editor I, who have to who has to edit this because they'll have to fix the compression. Not too loud at all. Okay, perfect then. Let's turn my mic down a little bit. This should be good. Super That's probably Mario good. Super Mario 64 has 120. He's just a little bit loud. 20 stars you can collect. There are speedrun categories that. I feel like that's just slight. Is this good? Involve collecting all of them. However, there's me. Wait, that was me. Speedrun Mario 64 has 120 stars you can collect. There are speed. Dude, that's me right there. Oh my god. Run categories that involve collecting all. I know all those guys. However, the developers only required you to collect 70 of them to beat the game. That's how many you needed to make it up the endless staircase and into the- Do you whatever is pissed that this is the clip that they used from him? Because it's him fucking up the stairs so bad. To beat the game. That's how many you needed to make it up the endless staircase and into Look at the this. final stage. What is that? For years, 70 stars was the minimum needed to beat Super Mario 64. But years after the game's release, that number suddenly dropped to 50. Yep. Eventually, it was lowered again, this time to 31. And in 2004, the number fell to just 16. Super Mario 64 could now be completed in under half an hour. And in the summer of 2004, the first 16 star speedruns of Mario 64. Dude, he posted on the 16th with 16 stars at 16, 16, 16 o'clock. 64 were performed. There were a handful of records set over the course of a few months, from players like Cyberrath and Christina Korsak. But the dust settled a bit when a runner named Ilu Dude set a big record. In November 2004, he beat the game with 16 stars in 21 minutes and 56 seconds. Damn. And here's how he did it. Someone insult didn't activate Windows. Chicken, thank you for Prime. The first goal in a 16 star speed run is to collect 8 stars, <laughs> which unlocks he didn't even fucking skip first Bowser level, Bowser in the Dark World. He got the first star by going into bob -omb Battlefield and ground pounding the chain chomp <laughs> hole 3 times, unlocking the star. That was cool. One of the fastest ways to move in Super Mario 64 is the long jump. So Illu Dude chained these together over and over whenever he could. He's a genius! Look at those Next, long jumps! He went into Womp's Fortress to collect five more stars. He got the first two by going to the top of the stage, defeating Womp, and then climbing to the top of the fortress. He then quickly got the star on the ledge by side flipping to it, 
then opened the cannon, used it to blast away the wall, and shot himself into the star to collect it. Like a, a legend. slow process that ate up around half a minute. Finally, he got picked up by the owl to fall into the cage and collect another star. That put Illa, his total at- Illa dude was wiling out in 2004, man. Goddamn. Six stars. The remaining two came from sliding down Peach's slide to collect both stars, despite a bit of slow movement along the way. Illudude was then able to enter Bowser in the Dark World, where he used long jumps all over to move through the stage. It took two throws to hit Bowser with the <laughs> bomb, but eventually he got the job done. Yikes. Now that he could go into the basement, Illudude's next goal was to collect seven more stars to allow Mips the <laughs> Rabbit to appear. Can't even get Mips. The first two stars came from Shifting Sandland. Yeah, honestly, the quality of this video is really good for 2004. Like, most people at this point were just pointing webcams at their TV. Like, that was, a, that was still the meta in, like, fucking 2008. Where he got one from quickly... Is this real footage of the run? I don't know. Probably. Someone in Saul would never lie to us. Stafford, thank you for 14. Yeah, better than Liam in 2020. That's correct. But nothing is better than Liam in 2020, which may be happening. Maybe. Dude, if Liam comes back, I'm getting my comeback. ...jumping at the top of the pyramid, and the other from slowly waiting on... We're top not of playing OT, AJ. You gotta, to you gotta chill. The next two came from lethal lava... ...waiting on right. top... ...one from quickly jumping at the top of the pyramid, and the other from slowly waiting on top of a pillar for a bird to arrive. The next two came from Lethal Lava Land, where Illudude boiled the big bully and collected eight red coins. <laughs> his movement wasn't ideal in any of these- Oh sections. my god, he's just running! His only real strategy- Does he know what a dive is? God, dude. ...fast was to long jump whenever he could. Finally, the last three stars came from collecting the Toad Star, then heading into Hazy Maze Cave, getting the Emergency Exit Star, <laughs> and the Watch for Rolling Rock Star. That's a pretty good move. For, now, two, for 2004, this is nutty as shit. Illudude had 15 stars, which spawned Mips the Rabbit. Normally, you can just grab him for a star, but Illudude was going to use him for a trick discovered by Dom Dunk a few months prior. Dom Dunk. This was the key to beating the game with 16 stars. The first step is getting Mips through this door. By putting him down right in front of it, then going through the door, you can quickly jump back and stand inside the door. What the hell? From there, you can pick up Mips, turn around, and place him on the other side. Dude, what? I've never seen that Mips clip. I know that that people did like there's this Mips, there's this Mips clip where you dive at the wall and you clip Mips into the door, but I've never seen that. This is yeah, this is the ancient arts. You said this the other month that you saw this? What? No, I'm not lying. Pete, think of the 10 months. I have not seen It's a rare Mips clip, okay? Then pick up Mips. Maybe I did see it, but I definitely don't remember it. And I've definitely, yeah, I think I might have diabetes. Turn around and place him on the other side. Then you want to take Mips to this door, which you normally need 30 stars to pass through. By placing him in front of it, you can jump between Mips and the door to Bruh. get pushed okay. through it. Okay, I think I've seen that. Skipping the 30 star requirement. The Mips clips could be difficult to perform, but if done properly, they would save many minutes off a Super Mario 64 speedrun. Many, many minutes. After this, Illudude went into Dire Dire Docks. Second time I've heard him say I've never seen that Mips clip. Fuck off, Damp. All right, wait, let's go back and I missed this. Throwing Mips through this right. door. Wait, what is he doing? By putting him down right in front of it, then going through the door. What the you fuck? Can quickly jump back and stand inside the door. Huh? From there, you can pick up Mips. I've never seen that Mips clip. Turn around rare. and place him on the other Actually side. Actually rare. Then you want to take Mips to this door, which you normally need 30 stars to pass through to get pushed could be difficult to perform but if done <laughs> properly they would save many minutes so off the super mario 64 speed run after this illudude went into dire dire docks collected the submarine star to unlock bowser in the fire sea nice and went through it as fast as he could once again it took him two throws to defeat bowser Weak. but he now had the second key it was time to head upstairs where he was about to perform probably the most iconic trick in Super Mario 64 speedrunning. He's performing. The backwards long jump. Yes! I love this trick! This trick's so cool! 
This trailer yeah, 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 yeah. November 2000 edition of Nintendo Power Magazine. But it's quite likely Nintendo knew about it as early as... Wait. This, this, was a, this was in a Nintendo the Power... was popularized in a November 2000 edition of Nintendo Power Magazine. But it's quite... 2000? Is he saying the year 2000 it was in Nintendo Power? Quite likely Nintendo knew about it as early as 1997. Imagine not actually buying the 2000 edition of Nintendo Power and showing us a clip or a piece of the magazine snippet. Somebody's salt fell off. I'm going to ratio him soon. Since that year, they released an updated version of Super Mario 64 in Japan that made the trick impossible. Wait, it's somewhere? Where is it? I want to find it. I want to see what that looked like. Oh, shit. Wait. Wait, it was in Spanish? Can anybody translate this? Wait. Super Mario 64... To end with less than 70 stars, it is not about knowing, what'd you say? It is the, Hodre. I know some Spanish. Um, one, 50 stars and arrive at the stairs to arrive in the area upstairs in the castle. Uh, get the... Uh, I don't fucking know. My Spanish is not that good. He can keep going faster and faster. If your speed builds fast enough, it's possible to be on one side of wall on one frame and the other side on the next. And that means if you mash correctly, stop ringing the bell. You can backwards long jump and fly through doors. Yeah, how did the how did the, how was that not a wet dry world? Ilu dude performed this on both the 50 star door and the endless staircase, bypassing the requirements for 50 and 70 stars. I feel like he's cheating, dude. This angle right here, endless staircase, bypassing this angle looks like it should wet dry world. So I feel like Ilu dude was just hacking the requirements for 50 and 70 stars, respectively. Then it was a matter of making it through Bowser in the sky and hitting Bowser with three bombs at the end. How did that hit? It took him six throws. Most, here we go, we have we have GTM talking. You know GTM has, has weight. Most noobs cancer mash on the left side and then don't realize to move their stick while cancer mashing and they down warp. World record by a significant margin. This run was pretty good for 2000. I'm surprised I haven't heard of Illudude, actually. Because I feel like I... I I went back and looked at like old 16 star records because I was looking at what was the first record that used cannonless. So I didn't know, I didn't even know, I didn't even know who the other dude was. Four. Given how new the MIPS clips and BLJs were. However, golden eye guy. as noted before, the movement left that makes much sense. to be desired. And some tricks took several tries. And about six months later, yeah, it was a player named Kirby Carter would lower it by about a minute. He definitely did clean up the movement a bit, but was still mostly using long jumps. Yeah, this he didn't is misses many throws. This is the quality I would expect from like 2004. Like this is so much worse. On Bowser and was able to get the BLJs extremely quickly. However, the biggest revolution introduced in this run was the new, more reliable version of the MIPS clips. Oh. Wait, that Oh. Dude, they're so dumb. They have, how did they not know that you could just jump here? The fact that they dropped the bunny off, God. Cringe. For the first one, by dropping Mips on the seam between the door and the wall, Mario gets pushed forward and becomes stuck inside the door. The rest of the trick can be completed as before. For the second clip, it's the same process as the first clip, but instead of getting stuck in the door, Mario gets pushed through all the way to the other side. These clips were both faster and more consistent than before, becoming the clear methods to use. So, going into mid-2005, Kirby Carter's 2046 was on top. A solid record, with Let's go, Kirby. proof that from 2005 wasn't always a given. The oh, that was cool. timeline was pretty straightforward at this point and it followed a pattern seen by most early speedruns from the mid-2000s. Early runs recorded on VHS with primitive strategies, 
followed by improvements in big chunks over the following years. Mm-hmm. However, after this point, big chunks. the 16-star history takes a bit of a turn. Okay. For the next several years, there would be two major caveats in the timeline. First, cheated or faked runs would be illegitimately on top of the leaderboard what? for more than 80% of the next decade. That is For fucked. most games, cheated runs do occasionally happen, but rarely does it affect the record timeline as substantially as it did for 16 star. So, the fastest runs from legitimate players will be included in this video instead. Oh, let's and go! Second, He's doing he's doing the right timeline. He's like it's like he's going back in the past and he's writing the wrongs, setting the record straight, mending the broken cheated timeline of Mario 64. Although most runs had video proof when performed, Chris, thank you for the prime. Records before Fuck the Cheaters 2013 have very little video surviving today. And some of the and, surviving Andy, thank you for the 15, by the way. Stuff is very low quality. Jesus. Yeah, this is the shit that I was... This is from 2009? Dude, I never understood why the text... This is from Nico Nico, right? I never understood why the text was... Like, it would just always go over the top of the screen. They've been spamming W's since 2009, at least. Bernardo, thank you for the prime. Many runs were live streamed at the time, but the videos weren't saved. There were also many emulator records at this time, but since they reduce lag and aren't kept on the same leaderboard as console runs, they won't be included in this video. Fuck them. It's a bit tricky to analyze runs from this period, but we'll work with what we can. After Kirby Carter's 2046, a player named LeCourer103 would rapidly lower the record down to 1908 over the course of 2005. He posted his times on the Speed Demos Archive forum, but videos for these runs seem to have never made it online. So, despite- Wait, does that literally translate to the runner? Despite lowering the record by a minute and a half- Wait, someone's saying it's the animals. The baby? There's not much to analyze. Then, by 2009, the record scene moved to Japan. I'm not faking that I care about what the Raiders were doing. I know virtual. I know, I know about the, the cars and shit. No, I don't give a fuck. All right, bye. Zara, thank you for the 200 bits. Through August 2009, four players set a record. Sho, Shigeru, Cass, and Taka. Taka. Most of these runs- I know Taka. Runs don't have surviving video. Sad. And the ones that do were live streamed with 2009 levels of quality. <laughs> so instead- Holy shit, we'll man. We'll skip to December 2009. When we stop pausing, okay, sorry. We finally get a run with a clean video feed from Taka. Remember, Kirby Carter had gotten a 20 minute run in 2005, and there were allegedly 19 minute runs later that year. What did Taka get in 2009? How about a run clocking in at 17 minutes 18 seconds? Damn! Only, this record was on another level. Look at the moves! No owl! Big jumps! That's a cool strat. The amount of tricks, the level of optimization, everything about Taka's run was miles ahead of runs from years prior. Truth be told, there had been many new strategies slowly implemented in runs over the years, but they all came together in Taka's record. And they started literally right when the game begins. Normally, once you reach the middle of the bridge, Lakitu stops you for a cutscene. Yes, he does. By jumping on the very edge of the bridge railing, Taco is able to skip the trigger for the cutscene and save about 7 seconds. Yeah, man, 13xx is possible in 16 star. Once he went inside, however, the run really started to take off. This was thanks in part to a handful of major new tricks. <laughs> Kirby Carter's run from 2005 was good, Thank you, Palma. but Taka had some tricks up his sleeve that changed everything. Oh? Trick number one. In bob -omb Battlefield, Taka performed the bomb clip. By what? activating the bomb what the hell is this? by it toward the gate, you can precisely jump before it explodes, getting huh? through the gate to collect the star. This <laughs> saves close to 10 seconds over what the, the standard method. Dude, okay, I knew that there was a clip 
for this offense using the box, I've never seen that bomb flip. Ever. That is some archaic shit. That looked hard to do, too. Taka then went to Womp Thank you, Siren, for the 13 bits. And performed trick number two, a legendary one known as Cannonless. Mm -hmm. The normal process for getting the blast away. This is why I know Taka, because I had to go back and look at these videos. I'm pretty sure this was the first record that had Cannonless. Pretty sure. The wall star is slow. First 16 star it record. involves opening the cannon, jumping in it, shooting at the wall, and landing to collect the star. However, this can all be skipped by performing cannonless, where you just run at the wall in the perfect spot and collect the star without Easy. blasting away the wall. Easily. It saves around 20 seconds over using the cannon, which is huge, but the issue is the precision involved. You need to hit the exact right spot in the wall for this to work, so that Mario grabs the ledge the star is on top of and his hitbox moves up to intersect with the star. Such Even a crazy glitch. To set up the trick didn't help very much. The most skilled players struggled to hit the trick more than about 20% of the time. 16 star runs were transformed with cannonless. You had a couple shots to get it, but if you failed, you'd have to reset. So now, most Trevor. runs wouldn't make it past Hello. the two and a half minute mark. I hope the Popeyes was good. Thankfully, Taka hit cannonless first try just so he could go and perform trick number three immediately after. By triple jumping and wall kicking off the cage perfectly, you could fall in it without having to use the owl. That's insane! He only saved around six seconds, but owlless became a staple of 16 star runs as well. Another big upgrade for Taka was his movement. Older runs had just used long jumps, but Taka it's crazy that Owlus only saves six seconds. That trick feels like it saves so much more time. He carefully selected his moves to optimize the speed of each section. Diving was used all over for short Hello, speed late bursts, virtual raiders. While long jump still had their place for longer straight sections. Long jump. This upgraded movement could particularly be seen in Bowser in the Dark World, where Taka varied his movement all over to collect eight red coins for an additional star. Bro, people act like they actually care about the owl sleeping, but I think it's all performative and virtue signaling. The back half was clean too. Fast MIPS clips and BLJs helped save some additional time. However, the run definitely wasn't without its faults. Infinite thing for the he had some slip the ups, like here in Lethal Lava Land, <laughs> and he missed the throw on Bowser at the very end. What a noob! But thanks to the upgrades in movement, strategies, and overall execution, Taka's run was more than three minutes faster than the early records. Super Mario 64 speed. Taka just brought the game, to dude. I swear, Mario always has its fate. It oh, there's always someone that comes through with the sauce. Sometimes it's a collection of people. I don't know what the community was like at the time, but this reminds me of like when Nero came to 120 star in like, oh, what was it? Like 2015, 2016, he completely changed the game. Like sometimes someone just awakens and they ascend and they're like, you know what? I'm going to a new fucking level. When Nero came back into 120 star, he literally ruined everyone. He fucking wrecked everybody and forced us all to up our game. It was like a new, it was, it was literally the new level. I, I feel like that was, I don't know if that was Taka's place at the time, but it's interesting to see like how, how that goes. Like right now, I don't know who, who you could say is like doing that for 16. It's like a collection of people pushing each other, but cheese has a shit ton of sauce. Cheese has done a shit load for the game. Speed runs were about no to doubt. enter a new era. Gone were the days of infrequent records with suboptimal strategies. Over the next year and a half, the record would be broken nearly a dozen times. Most of the videos for these records didn't. The Golden Era. Survive, the Renaissance. Survive. But the few we do have show Gainax far ahead of its time. Hope you're chilling, bro. The two Thank dominant the record months. holders for this era were Taka and Shigeru. They took turns. Dude, Sh Shigeru was doing shit in 2010 that 16 star runners don't even do now. Like uh, the top of the top of the well, they don't do top of the fortress anymore. Actually, wait, I'm talking on my ass, I think. But there was a period where Shigeru Shigeru was like doing some really fucking insane strats. Really insane I'm strats. Lowering the record into the low 17. Yes, it's the creator of the game. Means before Shigeru broke the sub-17 barrier with a 1654. 
but when Taka took the record back with a 1652, he had a trick up his sleeve. LBLJ. What? LBLJ stands for Wobby Backwards Long Jump. Oh. And its origins can be traced to an October 2006 video where Mr. Robert Z jumped up from below and grabbed an exposed ledge. He theorized that you could then possibly do a backwards long jump. And it turns out he was right. A tool assisted fuck this dude runner named Mid. Nah, LBLJ sick. Jitsu showed it off in a TAS a month later. And it was Freak, eventually adopted by runners. By backwards long jumping into the basement ceiling, which extends upwards, you can land and repeatedly jump to build speed. You then land in a black area outside the front door with a lot of speed still built up. Then, you rotate the camera precisely to steer Mario's speed toward the 8 star door. If Dude, what is this? This is a YOLO LBLJ, isn't it? Rotate the camera. He is not. This is not rotating the camera. Precisely to steer Mario's speed toward the eight star door. If done properly, Mario will shoot through it and land next to the entrance for Bowser in the Dark World. This ultimately saves. Oh, it's task. My bad. What? Did someone just come in my room? Oh. Time because many of the eight stars needed to open the door are slow, like ground pounding Womp three times. By ignoring the 8th star requirement, players could now just get the key right away, collect three fast stars in Womp's Fortress, and head straight to the basement. Oh yeah! It saved half a minute overall. Armed with LBLJ- It blows my mind how much time LBLJ saves, but I guess it makes sense. Shigeru would continue to grind 16 star in 2010 and 2011. He would pull away from Taka, lowering the record deeper into the 16s, while optimizing his movement and tricks along the way. It was starting to feel inevitable that somebody would break the 16 minute barrier. I'm getting chills. I'm getting goosebumps. But as it turns out, the first person to get a sub 16 wouldn't be Shigeru. It wouldn't be Taka, either. In fact, uh -huh. it wasn't anyone who had set a 16-star record before. Oh? In August 2011, someone else broke through with a 1554. And his name... Was John! Was Matt Turk. Matt Turk. God, you think about 21 months? Nah, I'm just kidding. It was Akira. Wait, what? Was Matt Turk. Nah, I'm just kidding. Dude, who is Matt Turk? Why do I know that name? It was Akira. That makes more sense. Akira's run was a culmination of strategies that had been slowly developed over the years. It started with LB- Punch out God, okay. Yeah, I know his name. I just haven't seen, it's been a while. BLJ. He got it very cleanly, quickly rotating the camera to drop Mario in Bowser in the Dark World. After collecting eight red coins in the key, he got cannonless first try, Owlless and the side flip star, making all three of these stars. I like how he calls that the side flip star. It's called Wild Blue. Owl, but that's probably better for the app for the average audience. Bliss and the side flip star, making all three of these stars seem effortless. In Lethal Lava Land, he boiled the big bully, got a couple stars in the volcano, got the log rolling star via a precise triple jump wall kick, and got eight red coins. Akira's just slightly before my time. For me, it was, yeah, for me, it was Zaya. Odd me saying Akira and Zaya were the Japanese gods when I first started watching. These five stars were all relatively quick, the longest one taking only about 20 seconds. He then went into Shifting Sandland, got the star in the top of the pyramid, then bounced off a Sniffit to get the bird star early. A Sniffit? A fucking Sniffit? Are you serious? In the top of the that's not even remotely close it's not even remotely close there it's either a fly guy or a shy pyramid, guy then bounced off a sniff it to get the bird star early in hazy maze cave he triple jumped to it's a fly guy okay it's not even a shy guy get into the dinosaur room quickly then grab the emergency exit and rolling rock stars the MIPS clips were about perfect bro he trying come on <laughs> and in dire dire docks 
Akira went for the risky front sub to save a couple seconds. He tore through <laughs> Bowser in the fire sea, barely making a fast cycle. Both the backwards long jumps were instantaneous, oh my. and he nailed every Bowser throw to wrap up a sub-16 minute run. This seemed like it would be the last minute barrier ever broken in 16 star. <laughs> there simply wasn't enough time to save to take it past 15 minutes. <laughs> that being said, there was still some room to take it lower into the 15s. About six months later, Batora would grab the record for the first time oh, with shit. a 1552, losing a bit of time to bad movement early, but saving time at the end with a cleaner Bowser in the sky. I didn't know Batora ever had a 16 star record. That's actually pretty crazy. Batora the legend, still holding the 120 star record. Not to be outdone, Akira would beat him by a full 8 seconds in April 2013, thanks to a fast LBLJ at the start and tearing through the other BLJs. This 1544 would then stand on top of the leaderboard for the next two years. That's an incredibly long time for a category as competitive as 16 star. True. There were a few reasons this happened, but one really big reason is a trick about three minutes into the run. I'm talking, of course, about cannonless. Fuck this shit! It was a pretty big blow when two thirds of your runs would die to the same trick right at the start. There wasn't a way around it. Dude, this was this was the dark era of 16 star, I think. When when there was no setup at all for 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 cannonless, dude, this is how you lose your mind. Is this trick? It's so trash. You either got oh yeah, exclamation point cannonless. If you want to watch a history of my cannonless shit, uh, cannonless, you can learn all about the history of cannonless. Or you reset. For years, Cannonless had been end Oh wait, maybe it's exclamation point class. Whoops. ...ding record runs before they could really begin. I don't know what it's- what And it helped lead the stretches like this, where no world record- Never mind, there's no command. Just fuck me, I guess, whatever. Dead. For years, Cannonless had been ending record runs before they could really begin. And it helped lead the stretches like this, where no world records were set for many months. If someone could just figure out a way to set it up consistently, to grab the star every time, it would open up so many new doors in 16 star. In an oct that was kind of funny because he said open up doors as he uh, clipped through a door. Uh, I don't know if that was planned, but that was a really nice bit and I noticed it, okay? That was cool. October 2014, that's exactly what Sock Folder did. Sock Folder is a speedrunning legend. He's a god! He's found revolutionary setups for tricks in Ocarina of Time, yep. Luigi's Mansion, yep. even the original Super Mario Bros. Didn't know that! Once he sets his mind to figuring something out, he's usually able to do so. This time, it was a way to solve Cannonless. On October 8th, 2014, he came out with this complicated setup. You would grab the ledge, yep. pull yourself up, right. punch twice, Reset the camera, walk straight down, adjust the camera, pull yourself up, backflip, punch, walk straight down again, reset the camera again, then pull yourself up and walk down. If all this <laughs> was done properly, you would grab the star every single time. Dude, he found that shit in a day. I remember being there when he went, like, it, like, it was just like... The fact that no setup was found for years, he did this in a day. It was like, he's like, you know what? Everybody keeps complaining about Cannonless. Fine. I will try and find a setup. And within, within, it was literally within like one to two days, they got the setup and then also condensed it. The obvious problem with this was how slow it was. Even if done quickly, the setup cost 10 seconds over normal Cannonless. That's a significant amount of time in a run like 16 star. But luckily, later the same day, runners Def Tech and- Sorry I'm late, can we start from the beginning? Yeah. <sighs> same day, Runners Def Tech and Gothic Logic would find an improvement. I miss Def Tech you so much. You didn't actually have to do the first part of the setup. Shout out to Gothic Logic. You could skip straight to jumping on the ledge next to the plank, 
then perform the setup from there. This meant you'd only lose 6 seconds instead of 10, which was a bit more reasonable, and the whole process still lined you up perfectly to grab the ledge and collect the star. Insane. It's no exaggeration to say that cannonless setup was one of the biggest finds in speedrunning history. Gigantic. Those two-thirds of runs that died at cannonless were now gone. It now had a near 100% success rate. This gave the record so much more potential, since without having to reset as much early, players could focus on optimizing the rest of the run. So, throughout 2015, a handful of runners were gunning for the record. And what resulted was a mad dash to push the record down as much as possible. God Zaya! Yeah, I like how he explains Pitherless in like one second. He doesn't give a fuck. Classic, dude. World record bad run. Name a more iconic duo. Fifteen twenty-four for those wondering. Carter, take the six. Ah. By May 2016, Zaya had taken the record all the way to fifteen twenty-four. A run with a really fast LBLJ, nearly every trick hit throughout the stages, and fast BLJs to boot. The only real noticeable slowdowns were a slow start to Pillarless and getting bad boulder luck in Hazy Maze Cave. A very impressive record given. It's kind of insane to think that, that those are like the those are like the mistakes in a 1524. Well, I'm not going to spoil it, but I think this record gets beaten. And how many tricks were now in the run? And incredibly, this record too would stand for nearly two years. But eventually, a couple of new runners began to get really low times. Their personal bests dropped below 16 minutes, eventually into the 1540 range. And it became evident that both of them were going to make a push for the record. This is Aki and Ouija. In November 2017, Aki got on a run that had potential. A great LBLJ, pillarless, cannonless. After getting the second key, he was on pace for a 1525, but could potentially get as low as 1518 if he matched his best last split ever. A record by sorry my camera's blocking i'll give you the full experience right now look at this 15 18 anyway six seconds it was all gonna come down to the blj yeah they both they both were kids weren't they i mean i they're still kind of kids in 2017 were they the same are they the same age ouija and aki ouija's what now 18 or 16 ouija's 18 now so Ouija was, Ouija got world record when he was 14. Ouija started playing when he was how old? That's so fucking insane. When he was one? See, you have to start speedrunning when you're like one nowadays. Days. <clears throat> <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> they were decent, but not good enough for a record. Aki would finish with a 15.28, 4 seconds behind Zaya. 
but a few months later, he'd have another shot at it. Four seconds ahead of his life. 21,000 attempts. 1,000 hours Last run. on the splits. He once again needed good BLJs. Oh, thank you. Thanks, man. Did you get your shit figured out? I mean, I was talking about. Oh, hope you had a good talk with your mom, man. All right, bye. This time, it was good enough. A 1522, beating Zaya by two seconds and making Aki the new record holder. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> But a few days later, it was Ouija's turn. Wait, he says a few days later, but now it's 2018. So it wasn't until 2018 Aki got that. These these are runs from. Ele wait, uh, November 2017. The fifth year. Once again. So this was in 2018. Okay. But a few days later. It was Ouija's turn. Nice. Oh, it looks so good. <laughs> it's all. I did it, man. He does sound so young. I did. I did. I did it. <laughs> Sounds like GTM when he got sub 18. Probably this true. This was the first ever sub 1520 in 16 star history. <laughs> One new trick he and Aki were using was in Womp's Fortress where he used a new setup for cannonless called Texture Setup that had been theorized years prior by Snowman. The front of the sub Instead is faster, of using yeah. Sock Folder's long setup, Ouija just lined up Mario's feet with a texture in the side of the plank and went for it. Fuck the long setup. It wasn't as consistent as the normal setup, but it was faster, and still more consistent than no setup at all. Compromises like this had to be made now that the remaining time saves were disappearing. He gained some time over Aki with a cleaner lethal lava land, but lost some in Bowser in the Fire Sea. His BLJs were excellent, but he had a slight mistake at the end of Bowser in the Sky. Although the run had some downfalls, it was still a record by 5 seconds. Not to be outdone, Aki would fire back 6 months later with a 15-16. He messed up the triple jump in Hazy Maze Cave, Oops. and his Fire Sea had a slow ending. He made up the time over Ouija, however, with a faster MIPS grab while standing, and cleaning up his mistake in Bowser in the Sky. Thank you, play a man for the bride. He also threw Bowser a bit faster each time, saving a fraction of a second per throw. At this point, when the record was lowered, it was typically only by a second or maybe a few seconds at most. When records get as precise as 16 star, where players have done tens of thousands of runs each, God damn. Taking time off in big chunks was pretty much out of the question. So but incredibly, just three weeks after his 1516, Aki was in position to do just that. Oh? Look at the fucking pace, 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 greens. As always, it came down to the BLJs. No pressure. This was it, an unbelievable chance to make history. He just had to make it through Bowser in the Sky, hit all three of the throws, and he'd be golden. Alright, nice, that's two. 
Yep. So fuck draws, because he got he, he got a 15-16, but it's not good enough for summoning salt, so we skipped over draws. But 1508 Pog! <laughs> a 15-08 was the largest cut off the record in more than three and a half years. A near perfect run from start to finish. Oh, it's because Draws deleted it? Okay. The mistakes in Hazy Maze Cave and Fire Sea were cleaned up, and his movement overall was optimized for time saves too. As you'd expect, this run stayed at the top of the leaderboard for a long time. Six months later, it was still in first. Second place was eight seconds behind. Nobody was getting close to it. Draws is now yeah. To have a realistic chance at beating this, you'd need new strats. The old ones had just about completely been optimized. As good as Aki was, it would help to change his approach if he wanted to take the record under 1508. So, as 2019 came around, he looked into what else he could do to save time. First, there was Cannonless. Texture setup was great, but it lost a few seconds over just running at the wall and praying. So, Aki decided that he needed to give up the consistency of the setup and go back to normal Cannonless. The same awful, brutal trick that killed two thirds of all runs years prior. This was obviously a really tough move, but the run was getting so optimized that it was worth it. Second, Fuck that, dude. Went for a f this is depression. OG having to go for OG Cannonless is actual depression. The same awful, brutal trick that killed two thirds of all runs years prior. This was obviously <laughs> a really tough move, but the run was getting so optimized that it was worth it. Second, Aki went for a faster setup for Pillarless. Developed by Tama, you would do the jump dive on the hill instead of going over the top. That, that was, like, the craziest shit that came out of... It felt like nowhere. Like, Tama out of nowhere found Tama Plus. I actually... I like Tama Plus better than the original, and it saves so much time. It's, like, two seconds faster. This enabled you to get... Two or three. Masayoshi, come! Come to you, my good man. Thank you for the nine months. ...hands-free quicker, and allow the trick to begin sooner than before. With these setups in mind, Aki kept doing attempts. On May 10th, the new time saves helped him be six seconds ahead of the record early. He would bleed some of this time in Fire Sea, but good BLJs kept him well ahead. Three Bowser throws later. 77 heartbeat on throws. Just an absolute daddy. Maxwell, thank you for the two months. He's a cold blooded killer. Lucky had done it again. I'm pretty sure his heartbeat monitor is not working. I'm pretty sure. Because it goes up like really fast afterwards. And <laughs> Dude, Ludwig made it in the video. Incredibly, this record put Aki 12 seconds ahead of anyone else on the leaderboard. Dicey thing with the prime. And he didn't stop there. Seconds ahead of anyone. Yeah, I forgot how hard Aki was just murdering shit. Else on the leaderboard. And he didn't stop there. He kept doing attempts for a lower record. He even had paces multiple seconds ahead of the 1504. But every time, something would kill it. No. But in late 2019, Aki would finally get some competition at the top of the leaderboard. And this particular runner certainly had credentials. Oh? He was both the zero star and one star record. Who is this mystery man? Holder. He was one of the best in the world at optimizing fast movement. And his name was Dowski. Look at this man! Dowski had previously held the 16 star record before, getting a 15 16 the day before Aki got his incredible 15 08. However, this time he wanted something more a record that would last for a while. 
Even though his personal best was a few seconds behind Aki, this is 1509. he knew he had the skill to keep up with him. So, Dowski's record attempts began, and on November 17th, he got on a run that fell behind early thanks to missing Canalis on the first try. However, God, what an absolute dad. Look at that Canalis backup, man. A run that That's a one in a million Canalis right there. Fell behind her. Imagine early getting Canalis this way. This is so insane. The missing Canalis on the first try. However, he more than made up that time with a faster fire seat, including a different strategy at the end where he avoided jumping on the edge of the stage. I didn't know Ultimate Ending was this old. I thought Ultimate Ending came around in 2020. I didn't know that. November, this is like when I came back, but I was doing 120 star. I wasn't, I didn't really know what was going on in 16. He had a four second lead over the record. This actually had sub 15 potential. But as Hot damn. Forever, thank you, Brian. As always, the BLJs stood in the way. Ultimate. Weirdo, thank you for the sub. They weren't great, but his best possible time was still one second ahead of the record. 15.03. If he could tear through the stage, he'd have a chance. Maybe? I don't think I got it. As it turns out, it would be record by just over a tenth of a second. God damn. For the first time in a year, Aki was no longer the record holder. With so many times being set in short succession, 16 star as a category was flourishing. There was really only one problem. At this point, it had been almost two years since someone with a funny username had set a record. In recent months, there had been Aki and Dowski, but to get a good one, you have to go back to Ouija and his 1517. Mm -hmm. And even that one's not amazing compared to the likes of 420 Blaze It and Shivering Erotic King Banana. But? Well, in early 2020, someone wanted to rectify that. Our Lord and Savior! He started moving up on the leaderboards, going from 5th to 3rd place right behind the two 1504s. And shortly thereafter, he would end up taking the top spot. And the runner's name certainly didn't disappoint. On February 27th, a 1503 was achieved by Slippery Nip. Yeah! He gained time Woo! early thanks to a faster LBLJ and managed to match Dowski's speed in making the Tsukishima cycle on the platforms. In Womp's Fortress, he gained time by hitting Cannonless first try partially thanks to a setup by Salt and Ginger to adjust the camera and clip in the wall more consistently. He maintained this 4 second lead until the second MIPS clip, which took him 2 tries, but gained about a second back on the BLJs. That worked out to a 15.03, just ahead of Dowski and enough to make Slippery Nip the new record holder. That's when he got his wife. People saying Siglemix Alt in the chat, that, that was actually the meme, like, back in the day, because Slippery Nip would run without mic and without webcam. And no one knew who the fuck he was, and no one believed that someone would actually name themselves Slippery Nip and, like, be this good at Mario. So no one thought it was, like, a real account. Like, everyone thought it was some alt or someone that wasn't actually already in the community. The community was beginning to approach a barrier. They were now just four seconds away from a sub-15 minute run. The last time a minute barrier had been broken was almost nine years prior, with Akira's 1554. Now, a run in the 14s was seeming inevitable. But what time saves were left? Well, looking at the 1503 record, the big potential time saves were the four seconds lost due to the MIPS clip. He even if, pause buffered there, really? Big potential Quick rage pause. Potential time saves were the four seconds lost Fuck! due to the MIPS clip, and a few seconds that could be saved on the BLJs. But beyond that, there were still fractions of a second to squeeze out all over. On LBLJ, Lethal Lava Land, Bowser in the Sky, 
all from subtle, faster strategies or improving movement. Those time saves all added up to a run well under 15 minutes. But someone still had to take it there. And one- I already added Hulk pause, actually. I got you, Admi. Player who would make a big push was Aki. After getting a 1503 of his own, Aki would get a very promising run going on May 1st, 2020. He was about even going into the MIPS clips, where he messed up the first one instead of the second one. Still, a strong Fire C and BL days kept him just ahead going into Bowser in the Sky. And there, he was able to make a faster elevator cycle called Monomo Cycle by making his movement as tight as possible. Oh yeah. Including an incredible triple jump dive onto the platform. Oh, it's so tight. Three throws later, Aki was so close to a sub-15. <laughs> One he barely cares. to go. Aki pushed onward over the coming days and weeks. Wait, was it at 174? Okay, this is when it was actually later. working. 170. Aki was so close to a sub-15. Shit's bumping, dude. One more second to go. Aki pushed onward over the coming days and weeks, getting great runs on pace that eventually died to something. The biggest culprit, of course, were the BLJs. Getting Mario to catch on the stairs seemed almost random at times. If you didn't get him to catch within a few jumps, it was run over, and even making it through would usually result in losing time. I don't know if I, I don't know what my BPM, I've never used a heart rate monitor. But Aki knew sub- 170 is like, isn't that when you're working out really hard? Like that's nothing crazy. Wolfabell hit 210 in Among Us? That's not surprising. Among Us is a stressful ass fucking game. 15 was within reach. He just needed one good run past the BLJs. And on May 10th... When, when motherfuckers be getting hella sussy and shit and you be, you know, pressing them, fucking that shit gets stressy as shit. Fucking stressy, sussy ass shit. 2020, good run past the BLJs. And on May 10th, 2020, Aki had this run. Oh. It was about as close to a perfect run as you could get. Look at how green it is! Chances like this don't come along very often. Now, more than ever, the BLJs needed to happen. 47,000 attempts. 47,000. They didn't need to be very good. He just needed something decent. He could get near perfect BLJs. This that was, was so his hot. chance for the run of a lifetime. Here we go. No! Not like that! Fuck! Shit! Oh, he's failing. <laughs> By the skin of his teeth, Aki had pulled out a 1459, the world's first sub-15. Amazing. Obviously, as good as it was, this run still had some room for improvement. He lost 6 seconds on the last split for mistakes in Bowser in the Sky. But still, that was it for big time losses. It was an incredible run up until then, and it was daunting to try and beat. For the next several Okay. I just gotta say, the thing about these minute barriers, like, I, ever, I think every speedrunner has it. The difference between, like, a 15 and a 14.59 seems like a bigger difference than, like, a 15.10 and, like, a 15.01 or whatever.
Like, it doesn't matter whether you're doing 120 or 70, that barrier breaking shit. I mean, those of you who have watched Slit for a long time know, I'm sure that that's, like, part of the reason of, like, failing the, the throws or whatever. Like, the nerves hit so much harder on the minute barrier. But imagine if, like, our minutes and seconds and our, like, t time systems was, like, recalibrated so that maybe it wasn't even a sub-15. It's like a sub... It's like a... Uh, I don't know. Anyway. Couple months, there was little action at the top of the leaderboard. The top three stayed in the same spots, and 2021 came around with <laughs> just Aki in the elusive sub-15 club. See this guy down here. Yeah, imagine if we didn't have minutes and we just had seconds, but then there'd be there'd still be barriers everywhere. Arbitrary nerves, yeah, but it's real to us. Okay, anyway. He stayed in this there was daunting to this. Okay, okay. It was an incredible run up until then. <sighs> and it was daunting to try and beat. For the next several months, <laughs> there was little action at the top of the leaderboard. The top three stayed in the same spots. And 2021 came around with just Aki in the elusive sub-15 club. A very illustrious club. See this guy down here? This is Kano. And he was Kano. sixth place in the world. Wait, I've been saying it wrong. He's actually saying it right. Kano, not Kano. I always get people in my YouTube comments saying, why do you always say his name wrong? And I didn't know how you're supposed to say it. Um, but I know now. Kano. Kano. World with F1 here. This is Kano. And he was sixth place in the world with a 1517. He was considered an elite runner of the game, but generally not considered a world record contender. What? 18 seconds was a lot of difference for a short category like 16 star. That's true. And there were several people between him and the top spot. Well, in February 2021, Look at him. Kano started up a stream on Twitch. And he decided that he wasn't going to end this stream until he set a 16 star world record. He wasn't going to be playing all the time. Insanity. There's no, I, I have not heard of something more insane than that. I will not stop my stream until I get a world record. Literally the most crazy shit. Also, he even went to the, do you guys remember? He went to the doctor at one point and the doctor was like, you need to stop streaming like your, your health. And he's like, fuck it. No, I'm going to keep going. Time, he'd still live his life and sleep on a normal schedule, but his stream would stay live the entire time. He knew he'd have to do some work <laughs> given how far he was from the record, but Kano didn't care. <laughs> he wanted to be the record holder. So he got to work. Life went on, and Kano kept streaming 16 star. By March, his time was down to 1513. By April, it was 1507. His stream kept going. He was improving his skills and getting close to a record level. By May, he was starting to get really close, entering the top three with a 1503. All the while, the length of the stream climbed- Fuck off, Man of Steel. No, I don't want to floss my ass hairs. I'm banning him. Higher and higher, going past 1,000 and then past 2,000 hours. Until finally, on June 12th, 2021, Kano had this run. He actually gained some time early thanks to a new strategy in shifting Sandland by Circlemark994, but lost a bit on MIPS from Sniff it, Liss lower setups for the clips. He bled a bit more in Fire Sea from an accidental ground pound, and his BLJs weren't as clean as Aki's, but he knew the time he could save in Bowser in the Sky. After a clean stage, three throws separated him from a record. Hi Slick! Insane throws! <laughs> oh my god! Oh, what? 
more than 3,000 hours of streaming finally put behind him. A 1517 to a 1458. An unbelievable push that paid off. Wait, is it too loud? In the I can't even hear it, actually. Well, I can hear it, but I think it's fine, probably. And Kano could finally hit the end stream button. As the summer of 2021 went on, a few people were- Alright, wait, where, where's GTM's cameo? Ah, there he is. Nice. GTM, when are you gonna be up here, man? Come on. It's about time. An unbelievable push that paid off in the end. And Kano could finally hit the end stream button. As the summer of 2021 went on, a few people were going for a sub-1458. One of the most notable players was Ouija. He's back. He had set a record. Th the child prodigy of Mario 64 speedrunning. Three years prior with a 15. And Super Mario Sunshine. 1517. But hadn't been able to replicate it. Still, he was considered a top runner. Emily, thank you for the raid. For years, he would continue lowering his personal best. Staying within seconds of the record at all times. However, he never was able to take that top spot again despite coming close on several occasions. At least, until July 4th. Go simply? Oh, I'm going hard. I'm fucking going in right now on this reaction. 2021. Surely Ouija will get the record, right? Look at the pace! The run! That's it. After he just needs the star. Months, thousands of attempts and numerous personal bests in the top five. Ouija had finally done it again. He had beaten all the rest and had taken back the world record. I didn't. I didn't get it. Dude, just drink time. No, I didn't get it. No, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Ouija, you fool. When Ouija stopped to scroll through the text boxes, Mario was facing away from the star. All he had to do was turn around and jump into the star, but he accidentally jumped forward and lost about a second. To clarify, it's because he jumped on the first frame. Like, Mario takes like one frame out of a text box to turn, so he hit the jump button on the very first frame that he could. So, basically, he's frame perfectly bad at the game. It cost him the record. To this day, he's still trying to get it back. But that's not the last run to talk about. Because in August 2021, a runner would come back to snag one final record. You'll get it, Ouija, I believe. If you wanted. Oh shit, who is it? Fly guy list, 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 list. Green split, 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 split. Pace, pace, pace. Fuck, 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 fuck. Gold, gold, gold. So, who was the runner? Well, it wasn't Ouija, it wasn't Aki, Dowski, nope. Nope. or Kano. There's only one username it could have been. Wow. Alright, cool. Sweet. <laughs> Alright, cool, sweet. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel, it really helps me out. And check out the pinned comment for links to people who helped with research and the runners in the video. No. Thanks. Thank you, Summon Insult, for, 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 for providing us with yet another absolute banger of a video. It was fucking fantastic. It was amazing.
came at the perfect time. Yeah, if you guys care about the, the 16 grind, this is definitely not the end of the story. That record is gonna get lower, and I feel like the current grind or the current push is for sub 1450. Yeah,